been trying to find you at school today. I have big news, and it's bad. Real bad. Don't leave me hanging. Mom says we're defo moving to California by the end of the month. What? No way. That's a two-day drive from here. Yeah, I know. <sighs> but Mom's marrying David. The same David that's scared of spiders, cockroaches, and everything? Yeah, that guy. He's been trying to get her attention for ages, sending her flowers, playing the guitar on her porch. Then last week, he even climbed up the oak tree so he could hand her flowers through the bedroom window. Okay, that's kind of creepy. Ew. Tell me about it. But you know, the worst part is, I have to transfer to another school. No, no, no. Lisa couldn't move away. Who would I sit with at lunch? Who would I watch corny movies with? Ugh, we've been besties for years. We couldn't just be separated like this. No one would ever understand me like she did. We were like two halves of a whole. Her dad had passed away, so she only had her mom, while I only had my dad. And yep, that's my amazing dad. It's been just me and him for the past 10 years. I still remember that afternoon when my mom took her suitcase and left with another man. After that, me and dad moved back here, to our hometown, New Hampshire. It's only when I got a little older that I found out mom and her lover scammed dad out of everything. So dad's been working his butt off to open his own repair garage to provide for us both ever since. It isn't fair. My dad's a hero, and he deserves to be with a better woman. Hold on. Yes, he deserves a better one. And who wouldn't be better than Lisa's mom? I needed to tell Lisa about my plan right now, so I immediately ran to my room and phoned her. Girl, I have the most genius plan ever to keep you and your mom here with me. Please, I'm all ears. Anything. I really don't want to move to Cali. Okay, listen. Let's set your mom up with my dad. He's a good guy. And that means we'll be sisters. We both squealed excitedly. Lisa always wanted to have a dad. A nice one. Not that David creep. Ugh. I could see the envy in her eyes when I spoke about the funny pranks I played on my dad. Well, in contrast, my heart ached whenever she told me about the girly pamper days she had with her mom. <sighs> okay, first, research is important. We spent all night looking up their horoscopes, name astrology calculator, and even physiognomy. Whoa, they're a 98% match! But hey, nothing is perfect, right? Me and Lisa would make up for the missing 2%. The next day, we were both zombies due to the lack of sleep. But at least a proper plan had been set. I told Lisa to tell her mom, Mary, to come around on Saturday for my birthday. Um, yeah, it's not actually my birthday. But she's a presenter for a big news channel, so she's super busy. We needed to make up some special occasion so she couldn't say no. Then I told my dad to prepare his signature dish to welcome my special guests. There's no way Mary could resist. That day, I was helping dad with the ingredients when I heard the doorbell. I opened the door to see Lisa standing there with a pink frosted birthday cake. And by her side was her mom. Happy birthday, sweetie. This one's for you. Oh, something smells good. Hmm, and so familiar. She continued. Hello? Mary? Jack? Why are you here? For Aaron's birthday. And you? I'm her father. And FYI, today isn't her birthday. Yeah, jerk. Mary said under her breath while rolling her eyes. Excuse me? You dumped me for no reason, so what's that attitude? Oh, really? For no reason? My eyes darted from Dad to Mary. Huh? Why were they yelling at each other? This was very confusing, but I could guess that they used to date? OMG, what a small world! Okay, whatever, because it's lunchtime now. And wow, Dad's legendary meatloaf smelled amazeballs. We sat down. And Mary glared at Dad as she took a bite of food. Then she blurted out, Oh, wow. I guess some things never change, huh? Your food is still super salty. Oh, really? 
But as I recall, someone still asked for seconds. Unbelievable. Excuse me, but do you know each other? Lisa innocently interrupted. There was an awkward silence. Then Dad said, Yeah, we do. But this is the first time I've seen Mary since we broke up, right after I visited her studio for the first time. Mary looked flustered as she replied, Lisa, you shouldn't have tricked me into coming here. Finish your food, then we're leaving. On hearing this, Dad ordered Lisa and me up to my room so he could talk to Mary in private. Only, we hid behind the couch and listened in. Turns out, on that day, Mary took my dad to the studio to watch her first filming as a news presenter. After that, she'd passed by the waiting room and overheard dad talking to someone. I clearly heard that person ask you how I looked, and you said I was still the same old Mary. Do you have any idea that I spent two hours in makeup and was excited to show you? Dad tried to chime in, but Mary wouldn't give him a sec. We're still. Later, you even told them you were over the moon I wouldn't be your girlfriend for much longer. Thus, to intercept that, I had to break up with you first. Oh, my. So my dad was a playboy or something? Lisa and I swapped confused looks, then continued watching the show. My dad was dumbfounded, and then he said in a helpless voice, Oh, Mary, things were not like that. I said that you look the same because you're always as beautiful as the day I met you. And about the other thing... Yeah? Um, I prepared a ring to propose to you, so you no longer be my girlfriend, but my wife. What? So they broke up because of an absurd misunderstanding and lost contact since then. Jeez, I thought adults were meant to know what they were doing. It sure didn't seem like it at times. Mary gave Dad an awkward smile, and they said that they could be friends. Then she told him about David and how she was marrying him on the 22nd of December. No! We couldn't let this happen. There had to be another way of getting them together. But that road was full of thorns and spikes, especially when Dad dropped a bombshell. His new girlfriend, Lucy! A few days later, when I was working on my art project, Dad walked into the room with her. Excuse me? She was wearing this super tight bodycon dress and had at least seven layers of makeup on. Ugh. Then she even dared to pick up the photo of me with Mom and smirked. Oh, how... nice. I rushed over to her, snatched it out of her hands, and shouted, Keep off my things! I don't like you! She immediately glared at me. But then seeing Dad coming down from upstairs, she suddenly smiled and hugged me while whispering in my ear, You don't, but you have to. Jeez, what a poisonous snake! But worse, when she left, Dad had this dumb grin on his face, and then he actually asked if I wanted her to be my new mom! Oh no, she'd hypnotized him for sure! In a rush, I called Lisa to tell her about it. She came up with the idea of asking her mom to join us at the Christmas market this week. Bummer. She refused. Apparently she had too much wedding planning to do. Ugh. And if you're thinking it couldn't get worse, then Dad invited Lucy along. So, Lisa asked her mom to let her stay with me for a few days, so we could teach this Lucy some lessons. May the pranking commence. That morning... Lucy showed up in this fancy light blue dress and ordered Dad to get her a chocolate-covered waffle. What a shame. I accidentally knocked it all over her outfit. Oops! Then a fake fly somehow fell into her hot chocolate. Her eyes almost bulged out of her head when she drank that. <laughs> but she just gave us a cunning smirk, then grabbed Dad's arm and cuddled close to him. Unbelievable! But you know, diamond cuts diamond. When Dad went to the restroom, with sparkling eyes, I said, Lucy, I really admire a nice person like you. My dad's only a mechanic with $1,500 a month, but you still love him. Um, so this isn't true. He ran his own business. But anyway... No way! He looks... rich, though. Oh, he probably was just desperate to catch your attention. He bragged a little bit. And you're proud of that?
That's not funny, sweetie. I am out of your dad's league. There's no way I'm putting up with a brat like you for such a poor man. Right at that moment, my dad returned and, no surprises, they broke up. Now she was out of the picture, dad was free to win Mary over, right? We three went home, and I noticed that dad was acting weird. He kept on pacing by the door. Then, when Mary arrived to pick Lisa up, he leapt to open it and blurted out to her, Have you thought any more about... us? She didn't say anything, but I noticed them exchanging these sorry looks. Their love for each other was so obviously real, as they knew each other since they had nothing. <sighs> Yet they weren't doing anything about it. It was already December 20th, meaning there were only two days left till the wedding day. I couldn't let our plan fail like this. I immediately grabbed my phone to call Lisa, but the ringing was next to me. She left her phone at my house. Dang! Then the next morning, I walked by her house to go to school as usual, but no one was home, and she wasn't at school either. Oh my, had they moved to David's already? I told Dad this right away when I got home. He thought for a second and asked me to get in the car ASAP to go to California. So our bumper two-day road trip began. When we reached the wedding venue, it was empty. Oh no, we were too late. Dad looked devastated. So I put my arm around him and started to lead him out of there. But then the receptionist appeared and said, Oh, didn't they let you know either? The wedding's been cancelled. Dad's face lit up, and we both raced over to the car and started the long drive back. Oh, it felt like ages in the car, and now it was just two hours until Christmas Eve. The roads were full of beautiful Christmas decorations. I looked through the windows and saw people gathering with their families, while Dad and I were driving nonstop. How sad. We drove straight to Lisa and Mary's, but they were out so we sat in the freezing cold on their doorstep and waited. Dad dozed off, his head resting on my shoulder. Bless. Then I saw them walking towards us. Oh man, you should have seen their shocked faces. <laughs> I shook Dad awake and he looked over at Mary. She dropped her bags and looked at us astonished. Then Lisa told us the whole story. Turns out, on the way to California, they met two amateur robbers who forced them to get out of the car. Mary immediately pounded them with her handbag, while David ran off and hid behind a tree. With Lisa! When the robbers scampered off, Mary told David everything from the bottom of her heart. That although David was wealthy, that was not what she wanted. Instead, she just needed a man who could support and protect her. She'd been flattered by his gestures of love, touched by his persistence, and thought that love could be cultivated. But things weren't as simple as that. So they broke up, and the wedding was cancelled. Dad and I were stunned. Then, with eyes prickled with tears, my dad said, Mary, I'm sorry for letting you go, but it's not too late, is it? Right after, he pulled the old ring from that day out of his pocket and got down on one knee and said, Mary, will you marry me? She cried out. Yes! Both Lisa and I were bursting with happiness. So now we both have a mom and a dad, and we're pretty much sisters. Yay! This is the warmest Christmas ever.